right so mr palmer here a bit bored of saying it's another computer science video but hey here we go so uh, this video is about data types so just looking at data representation so what are the five basic data types and how do you choose a particular data type okay uh, it's interesting because lot, not a lot of people actually know but you ask them what is a data type and they say oh it's the type of data but that's actually not really what we're thinking about here okay why do you actually need data types if I told you to go to the shop and buy two oranges but don't waste too much time, then you would uh, know what, I'm what you're looking at there in that sentence, okay? You'd be able to pull it apart and figure out what the actual data within there is and how it, you know, you know, what you can do with it. So you would know that, for example, two oranges is referring to a quantity of two, which is a number, okay? And you know that it's a whole number because we don't buy oranges in halves, yeah? So humans are able to do that computers find it very it's, you know computers can't basically pick it apart and work out what the the data types are there in terms of is it a quantity is it continuous is it you know whatever all right so another example of that would be something like a telephone number which we commonly refer to in day-to-day -day, um you know uh, conversation as a telephone number but the computer can't handle it that way as a number and we'll see why so basically what you need to be able to tell the computer is how you want to store that data because different data types are stored in different ways. They also indicate what operations can be carried out on the data because different data types allow you to perform different actions. Yeah. So in a nutshell, a data type basically informs the computer what processing and storage needs need to be made available Okay, uh, in order to handle that data. So the, of the five data types, the first one, number one, is the integers which obviously are whole numbers you should know that from your math lessons so we've got one two minus five zero these are all examples of integers integers are usually used for counting purposes so you can obviously think when you're coding and you're writing a loop you know when you write your um account control loop your your loop counter i j whatever it is yeah you're using an integer there uh data type number two real numbers okay so if we lived in we lived in an integer world and I sent you, I had five muffins and I was sharing them with you. You know what would happen? I get three muffins and you get two. Okay? In when we've got real numbers in the real world, we're talking about numbers that are decimal values. Okay? They're continuous. So you've got 1.0, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.3, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1.3, 0, 0, 0, 0, 2, like that. They're continuous on a number line. Okay? And we usually use real numbers for measuring things. And then one person in my class always is going to ask me, yeah, but sir, why do we use decimals for money then? Yeah, because you're measuring how much money you have. Okay, so decimal, not real numbers for decimals. Data type number three. Okay, we're talking about single alphanumeric characters. Okay, so capital A, lowercase a, one can be stored as a character, a number. Okay, um, a hash symbol, exclamation marks, whatever it is, single alphanumeric characters. Data type number four, therefore, are strings. And we're talking about multiple alphanumeric part, uh, characters. So, for example, this text, hello, that thing over there, which could possibly be your password, all right? And that telephone number that I was talking about earlier. Because if I sent you to the shop to buy zero two oranges, you know that that two, zero two, is a quantity, it's an integer, and the leading zero is meaningless. So you don't store it with the leading zero, okay? So here, telephone numbers are actually strings. Number five, booleans. So booleans are basically, we're talking about one or two different values. It can be a true, can be a false. True usually being indicated by one, false being indicated by zero. It depends upon the programming language implementation though. Okay, so, uh, you know, it is what it is. Most people are like, oh yeah, but you only need a single bit. Well, how come the boolean is, you know, taking up so much memory? Well, you use a byte for convenience. If you think about the way memory is organized, it'd be too difficult to address individual bits in the memory. So we address a byte that is um, storing the value for us. Okay, so now that you know what the five basic data types are, the question you need to ask yourself is how do you choose a data type? Okay, so sometimes it looks like one data type is suitable. For example, the telephone number. Okay, then you know the loads of students they say right it's a number i'm going to store it using an integer and they leave a zero at the beginning because for us uh, for the computer or for anyone a zero at the beginning of a number is meaningless we know that at the end of it you've added on an extra decimal placeholder okay so if it was one it's now become 10 
but the, begin the leading zero is meaningless. Okay, so <coughs> when you store something as an integer, it doesn't store that zero. If you want to store it, we basically need to indicate, all right, um, how we want it to be stored. Therefore, we need it to be a, a string. Okay, so we can store that zero. So you need to think about basically when you when you choose your data type, what is the meaning of the data? Okay, in this case, that is leading zero it has a meaning. Therefore, we need to keep it. Therefore, we can't store it as an integer, and we need to find an alternative data type. You also need to think about what processing needs to be carried out. So say you found some magic way of storing that leading zero, so you're storing it as an integer, but then you wanted to remove the zero and do a plus four four at the beginning because there's an international, you're giving your telephone number to some international person. Okay, so um, when you do that, uh, if you try to do four four plus four four plus your integer telephone number, you'd end up with another value, okay, and which is 44 higher than the previous one. Whereas if you stored it as a string, Okay, you can concatenate strings, you can preserve the zero, etc. Yeah, so you're thinking about actually what processing is being made available by choosing a data type. Numbers using arithmetic operators, strings can be concatenated, you can use mid, left, right, whatever it is. Okay, so um, substrings, blah blah blah. All right, so by choosing a particular data type, you're allowing yourself to carry out particular operations. So you should know now what the five different basic data types are. Uh, what a data type is okay and it's not the type of data that you're storing in a variable okay and you should be able to think about or you should be able to explain how you choose a particular data type